Okay, hi there, and uh, welcome to a new video. For those of you studying supply-side economics, here's a revision video looking at some of the key factors that can shape and determine a country's long-term aggregate supply. So how do we define aggregate supply? Well, I think the best definition is probably it's the total quantity of different goods and services that all industries in an economy can produce at a given price level, the aggregate supply side potential of a country across industries from manufacturing to housing, to transport, to healthcare, to retail. Now, what are the key determinants of long run aggregate supply? Well, uh, in the long run, the ability of a country to produce those goods and services is fundamentally determined, or determined by the state of production technology of course, we hope that can change. And also the availability and the quality of the key factor inputs. Now, the vertical long run aggregate supply curve shown here tells us that we're using a neoclassical model. And that assumes that changes in the general price level have no bearing on the size of a country's potential output. Now, if you're using this model, what you're hoping to achieve, of course, is an outward shift of long run supply yp1 shifting out to yp2 and economic growth of course is shown by that outward shift of long run supply the keynesian or the keynesian curved aggregate supply curve is drawn differently and some of you may well be more familiar with this curve i mean fundamentally we're talking about the same thing but it's just the way the curve is drawn uh, in this case the aggregate supply curve becomes inelastic as a country reaches capacity limits so, for example, initially when AD1 rises to AD2, uh, we can increase real output very easily without there being a rise, a rise in inflation. But uh, as AD shifts out from AD3 to AD4, for example, spare capacity is being used up as aggregate demand for goods and services continues to rise. And in this situation, Y4, level of real GDP Y4, that's the full capacity level of national output. Now, this can increase if the aggregate supply curve shifts to the right. And that's shown in this diagram, an increase in long run aggregate supply. And that, of course, means we can increase our output without there being an increase in the price level. So what are some of the key factors affecting long run supply? In this slide, we're going to build five key points about some of the key influences shifting aggregate supply in the long run. The first is productivity, both of labour and capital. Now, as we'll see, productivity is extremely important for most countries. Lifting output per hour worked or output per person employed is one of the key supply side aims for many countries. Raising average productivity, not just of the workforce, but perhaps of the machinery and other, other technologies used in production. In the UK, for example, one of the issues is that there's a sizable productivity gap, uh, not just with other countries, we'll look at that in a separate video, but also uh, productivity gaps within a country. There's a big regional productivity gap, uh, perhaps too much of an emphasis on high per capita incomes in, in London and the South East. Many economists do believe that relatively low productivity is, is a key supply side weakness, which ultimately can cap and affect our competitiveness in global markets and our living standards. The second key factor affecting long run supply is the size of the labor force, labor, labor supply, and crucially, the participation rate of that labor force. So countries that uh, are growing quickly oftentimes have quite a fast growing natural population growth, uh, which can be added to by uh, substantial inward net migration of people. A third factor affecting aggregate supply in the long term is innovation and enterprise. So product and process innovation, for example, from the fruits of research and development, uh, from having new business startups with new business models and products, that can be a key driving force increasing potential output. Innovation is the commercial exploitation of new ideas. Essentially, it means making more with the same resources, being able to get more output from our inputs. So it's linked, obviously, to productivity. 
A fourth key factor affecting supply in the long run is the level of capital investment. So we look at gross investment by businesses, by, uh, by the public sector. The government, of course, can invest heavily in the state assets. And also, oftentimes, countries get inward investment coming into the country from foreign multinationals, foreign corporations. That can have quite a big supply side effect. Here's a really good example, a recent example in the economic development sphere taken from the African Development Bank. The construction of the Kanzangula Bridge can now connect Zambia and Botswana. And you can imagine that this infrastructure investment is going to increase the capital stock and potentially be trade enhancing, particularly within the, that region of Africa. And investment, a lot of people now are following the increased investment in renewable energy, not just in the UK and lots of other countries, both rich and poor. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a good example here of how infrastructure investment can increase a country's capital stock, which then increases aggregate supply. So investment is crucial. And so too, uh, we shouldn't forget, is the stock of natural or environmental resources. So the ability of a country to harness First of all, to find and then harness the natural resources, hopefully not too quickly, not uh, in an unsustainable way. But natural capital can also be really important. Establishing new mangrove forests, reforestation and land. These can be important ways of increasing the sustainable level of long and aggregate supply. Here's a really good example here from Nepal, uh, a community forest, uh, community forestry. Uh, where the forests were given over to local control. And a good example here of how remittance money coming into a country. Many, many Nepalese live and work overseas. Their remittances flow back to Nepal. In many ways, that helps local communities, including farmers, not to overuse their land, but in fact, to use some of the money to invest in reforestation. Good, good example of sustainable growth there. Three key concepts I want you to take away from this presentation. Three really key concepts. The first is productivity. Labour productivity measures efficiency per person employed or per hour worked. And lifting productivity, assuming we can measure it accurately, of course, is a key supply side objective. Secondly, the participation rate. So this looks at the percentage of the population of working age in a country that is economically active. In other words, they either have a job or they're actively looking for work. And one of the key aims of supply side policies is to increase the participation rate in the country from the existing population to increase effectively the active labour supply. And my third key definition is gross investment. Gross investment is the total spending on new capital, machinery, factories, hardware, and software, but without adjusting for capital depreciation. In other words, machinery wears out, has to be replaced, technology has become obsolete. So sometimes you make a, a replacement investment or depreciation allowance for gross investment to get net investment. This is just a summary slide for you of the things that we've been talking about today. Changes in long run supply are largely brought about by an increase in the labour supply, an increase in the stock of capital, changes to the availability of natural resources, changes to efficiency, productivity, improvements to the quality of inputs, uh, changes in the state of technology, for example, uh, the internet, artificial intelligence, uh, second generation renewable technologies and things, and also something I haven't really spent much time on, but institutions can also be quite important in driving long run supply. In, in particular, do you have a, a well functioning legal system? Is your banking system efficient and able to cope with the growing economy? So, there we go, a lot of detail there, uh, worth going back over if you have a few moments. But those are some of the key factors that influence long run aggregate supply.